it's Candace, and in today's QuickBooks Tips and Tricks, I wanna teach you how to create a closing date. So the purpose of this is at the end of the year, you create a closing date, and then you never go back in and adjust things without needing to put a password in. This keeps you from accidentally changing things after the fact, because you want everything to match exactly what you gave your tax professional for your taxes. So you can even do this after you've given your taxes to your tax professional, they've given them back, you've made any adjustments, then you're gonna do your closing date. So come look over my shoulder and I will teach you how. All right, so let's go in. It's super simple. So you wanna make sure that you do your closing date after you've looked at your profit and loss, everything is the way you want it to be, and you just don't wanna to have to make any more changes or accidentally make a change. So you're gonna click on company, and you're gonna go down to set closing date, and you're gonna click on that. And you'll notice that it brings you into the preferences. You can also get here from the preferences and accounting. You come down to the bottom and it says set closing date, date, which books are closed and it has a date. So you're gonna hit set slash password. And then what it's gonna ask you here is to keep your financial data secure, QuickBooks recommends assigning all other users their own username and password. So it's just saying, hey, if you have other people who are using your QuickBooks, make sure they have their own username and password. So that way you can differentiate like an administrative person versus somebody else. All right. Then it's gonna say, has a little check mark here, QuickBooks will display a warning or require a password when saving a transaction dated on or before the closing date. And this can say exclude estimates, sales orders, or purchase orders from closing date restrictions. That's up to you. Then you're gonna choose a date. Let's just say we pick October 31st because we're in the month of November right now. And then you're gonna enter in a password. And this password will be the password that everybody needs to know when they wanna enter a transaction. So if I pick October 31st as my closing date, if I try to enter a transaction on the 31st of October or anything prior to that, it's gonna require a password. Typically you only do this at the end of every year after everything's been entered, just so that you don't accidentally go in and when you're doing your data entry, you pick the wrong year. So just make sure all your data entry is correct because otherwise every time you'll have to go in here and put a password in. So you click okay and that's it. So I'll show you what would happen if I go in to write a check in the right check screen. We'll just leave that's fine, that number. And let's call it First, when I go to save this, I'm gonna act like I'm writing a check real quick. It will say, hey, you have to enter a password. And then the benefit to this is you would go, oh shoot, I'm in the wrong year. So once, once you've completed say the year of 15 and now you're working in 16, if you enter a closing date, or just say even 14. Right now, you're almost at the end of 15. You know everything's been entered for 14. Set a closing date for December 31st of 14. Then you won't make any changes in the 14 year. Then you can only make changes in 15. When you get into 16, change your closing date to the end of December 31st of 15. And you just won't have any problems with accidentally changing anything that could affect for your tax purposes. So I hope this tip has been helpful. If you enjoyed it, please share it with someone you know who could benefit from it. Don't forget to subscribe and you will get these weekly tips and tricks. I will talk to you soon. Have an amazing day. Take care. Bye-bye.